History Spotlight, brought to you by HEC Media and the Missouri Historical Society. Hello, I'm Dr. Jody Sowell, President of the Missouri Historical Society in St. Louis, and this is History Spotlight. It's tradition to ring in the new year with good company and good food. Library assistant Magdalene Link tells us why the New Year's Day menu at St. Louis's Barnum's Hotel was so special. Theron Barnum was born in Vermont in 1803 to a family that worked primarily in the agricultural and railroad business. In the 1820s, he was invited by his uncle, David Barnum, to visit his hotel in Baltimore. It was named Barnum's Hotel. And at the time, Barnum's Hotel had a reputation for being one of the best hotels in the United States. And Theron really took to this and kind of learned all sorts of things that he could while he was working with his uncle, kind of apprenticing at his hotel. And eventually he moved to Philadelphia where he took over running the Philadelphia Hotel. And shortly after, he and his wife, Mary Leigh Chadwick, moved to St. Louis. And in the spring of 1848, he took over the running of the City Hotel, which was located at Third and Vine. And he continued to operate the City Hotel until his retirement um, in September of 18. Now, despite his retirement, though, Barnum kind of was enticed and kind of approached by various entities uh, to kind of get back into the hotel business. And he decided to come out of retirement. And with the help of a man named George R. Taylor, Barnum's Hotel was built at Second and Walnut in downtown St. Louis. So the cost of the building was close to about $10 million today, with the cost of furnishings alone costing about $2.5 million. Uh, it had a, you know, tons and tons of rooms for guests who were traveling via train. The gentleman's ordinary, which was a dining room or social room, boasted seating for about 400 different people. And the ladies ordinary boasted seating for about 250 people. In addition to having seating for hundreds of guests, the hotel also boasted an entire storeroom dedicated just to pastries and another storeroom that was said to have more in it than most local grocery stores at the time. Barnum's Hotel really kind of gained a reputation for their food offerings, and especially a ragu that they made, uh, which had a really secret uh, recipe, but was really, really highly favored by all kinds of different guests, local and traveling alike. And we have a New Year's Day menu from 1875 that you know really gives a lot of insight into the type of delicacies that were being offered at Barnum's Hotel at the time. And the menu contains both food and drink offerings. Notably, the drink offerings contain a whole section of Missouri wines. Uh, and winemaking was a really established tradition in the Missouri area uh, since the Creole period. And a closer look at some of the food offerings show all kinds of extravagant and unusual things by today's standards. Things like a galantine of teal duck, a crepinette of peacock that was uh, fried and breaded and served a la russe, as well as a loin of antelope that was roasted and served with a side of sweet potatoes. And more familiar offerings, though, can be found if you look at the condiments and sides and desserts. Things like tomato ketchup, Worcestershire sauce, boiled mashed potatoes, and then desserts like mince pie, fruit cake, ice cream, chantilly cream, candies, all of those types of things could be found in that part of the menu. And it really kind of gives a great insight into what would have been, you know, a really extravagant feast. Uh, and Barnum continued to work at uh, the hotel and live in the St. Louis area until his death in 1878. And travelers and locals alike continued to visit Barnum's hotel until it was demolished in 1890. Next week on History Spotlight, a landmark civil rights case that started in St. Louis. To learn more about the Missouri Historical Society, visit mohistory.org.